Jingle ling a ling Sparks Are you there Sparks in the ether of the internet? I am in the ether of the internet. That's amazing. Main screen on. Main screen is on, Sparks. Welcome ever back everybody. How is everybody doing? Hopefully great. We we had a we had a bit of a bit of a break there, Sparks. I don't I don't even remember the last time we live streamed or live strum. Whatever whatever the, the, the noun is. Livestrum. Yeah, live strum. Past tense for yeah. Live okay, cool. Here we're here at the Ghost Draft Tourist Hub, uh December eighteenth apparently. Uh last week, exactly nine uh, days ago. That was last week, right? Uh it was my birthday. It's my birthday, Sparks. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It was spooky to the past. Spooky man over there. And uh yeah, we're over here at our bar. It's daytime. I can see the base of Sparks Tower. Uh, remember that when we when we climbed to the top of this this building here, and we named it after you, Sparks. Yeah. yeah. Also, I hate heights. I hate heights. Yeah. Right. It was a good thing you weren't a part of that stream. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were the chat. Actually, no. I, I really, I legitimately do have like a real fear of heights. Oh no, and he, it has been triggered. Yeah. In Elite Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, you do. Like you have um. There it is the top of the tower there and it's weird because it's a different feeling when you're in a ship looking down and and while you're like as a person looking down i don't know what it is i remember when we were like in the, just in this area here and i remember jumping from the main building to like some like i think those towers there and i looked down and i got disoriented like really like disoriented to the point where like oh my god <laughs> what's going on but it's so weird because it's all it is just a game right it's no different than looking down when you're in a ship, but I don't know. It's, it's just something about you know, mentally, your body thinks I'm going to physically fall down. Um, well, I don't think human beings really evolved to be up high. You know, what you I mean? don't think and so. When you're in like a ship, no. When you're in a ship, yeah, like you're still like in a room, and human beings are right. like, oh, I'm in a room. Yeah, right. But like when you're actually near the edge of something, like it's not like there were like wild cavemen roaming the sky you know that just wasn't yeah. a thing. it's not part of your dna it, it, it's uh it's like the dunes over here you know the um they did uh, with the latest update i think they did a little bit of a tweak on the planetary textures because it looks a little bit different out there i don't know if anyone else has noticed this or maybe it's just the position of the sun because it's kind of like high noon right now um I think it's, that's probably what it is, because usually I, we're here and it's usually like in the afternoon or the morning times on this planet. But uh, everything looks really flat uh, in terms of lighting. But anyways, enough of that. Let's go back to why we're here, right? Let's uh, get back into here. And it was me. I was the spooky person the whole time. Ooh, I haven't taken off. <laughs> this helmet smells so bad, Sparks. I have not taken this helmet off since I bought it before Halloween. But, uh, that's not hygienic. That's not hygienic, but I, it's so glowy, and I love glowy stuff. And uh, they have new um, Christmas stuff. You can be a snowman. They have snowman head. It's crazy. Uh, but you know what it reminds me of? Look, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you. Um, and if you can't see, just pretend and agree with me. Um, if you go to here, the snowman head is ridiculous. Okay, edit load it out. Is it made of real snow? I think so, but that's not the part that is weird. The part that's weird is that all it needs is a little like a uh, like a Pied Piper hat, and it'll look exactly like Jack from Jack in a Box, from like the commercials. Like look at this hat, isn't it? That's Jack from Jack in the Box in the commercials. I don't know. Even in America, well, you need a business suit. Yeah, yeah I need a business suit. I think it might be a West Coast thing, Jack in a Box. I know, I think there's some states in the United States that do, doesn't have a Jack in a Box, but this is literally their mascot. And you can buy this thing and you put it on your um, car antenna and drive around with it. So when I saw this, I thought, oh my goodness, lawsuit, Jack in a the Box. They're gonna, they're gonna see it's dangerous. Did I, ever tell you I once, I once applied to work at Jack in the Box. Everybody did. My dad worked there. Um, it was, it's a okay. But here's what happened to me. Uh huh. I went. Yeah. And I took the training. 
and then I got like a much better job, and so I never worked at Jack of the Box. So, but so technically, you still work there. Technical. So, what I remember from the training. Yeah. I I, I want to throw shade on Jack of the Box because it's a healthy restaurant, but back in the '80s, Jack of the Box had some problems. Well, that and one kid died. No, more than that, because in the training, they, they, they make you watch a video that goes, back in the 80s, eight people died, and that made Jack sad. <laughs> Did they really say that? <laughs> it made yeah. Jack sad? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I can't believe that this, oh man. Yeah, no, that was part of the training video. That's and so then funny. They're like, Food safety is now very important. Because <laughs> because we're here to please Jack and not the kids who are dying. Um, <laughs> w weird thing. So they replaced the uh, safety update um, thing with this garbage from like from like Star Trek or something. Uh, what the heck is this? How do I know how many days there have been since an accident? I don't get it. I'm not happy about that. Anyways, so now folks want to see the SRV. We're going to get there, folks. We, you know, we can't just get into SRV, right? Because then you guys be like, oh, now I see it. I'm going to turn off. I've, uh, I, I just wanted to reveal something to you all. Um, something I've been hiding for these past three weeks. And it, bum, bum, bum. Now, I never buy a ship skin for my, the Orca. Because no ship skins are any good unless they have polka dots. And once there's a polka dot ship skin, I'm going to get it. However, having said that, I got a new ship skin, and I got the chrome one. I've been waiting for this all year long. I think it's the only one that is worthy of the Orca. This nice chrome spaceship. Oh, that's beautiful, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, Sparks, pretend you, you really like it. I really like it. That's Oh, I, I th thank you. You don't you don't have to say that. That's, that's so nice of you. Okay, so now we're going to go inside. And look, th this is different too. You can select a robot seat and this other guy robot seat. Except it doesn't have a face. So that's weird. Anyways, I'm going to go. I'm a pumpkin. I'm going to board. I'm wanted apparently. How am I wanted? Okay. <laughs> Somebody it's says. Probably because of something you did. I didn't do anything. None of this is my fault. Okay, people are trying to invite me to their thing. Uh, let's see, Cryodroid's nearby, Disembowed Ego's nearby. Um, yeah, come to Helveti. I'm gonna go ahead and launch because, um, I want to see my ship from the outside. The ship looks good, like, the chrome, if you guys are wondering, it's, it's like, just for Christmas time. And, uh, the chrome and the golden ship skins look really good, uh, in station. Or on like atmospheric planets, but when you're in space, it's just so matte. It just it doesn't look doesn't look as cool. So I'm not I'm not super happy about that. Okay, I'm gonna go land over here. This is the actual parking lot of our ghost draft tourist hub. There we go. Yeah, cause look at this. Look at that. Isn't that that's a spaceship, Sparks? That is a spaceship and a half. Look at this. Does it get better than that? I submit that it well, cannot. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a spaceship and a half. Look at that. Exactly one spaceship. No, 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 no. It's a two for one deal. Actually, it's it's like a two, a one and a half. It's a deal. It is a deal. Look at this Sparks Tower in the background. Well, if it's, if it's if it's a two for one deal and you only got one and a half, I think you got you got screwed, man. It's tax, you know. You get taxed. That's how we do it at <laughs> at, this, at the uh, Ghost Draft Tourist Hub. Okay, here we go. There's a scorpion and there's a scarab. Which one? Okay, people, ladies and gentlemen of the chat, which uh which SRV did you come to see? Right? Did you want to see this one or that one? Uh, check on volumes, says Oz. Says Spark seems quiet to me. Anyone else? I mean, I'm not talking very loudly. That could be part of it. Yeah, maybe you need to shout more. Use your um, regular voice, the one where you just, you're just you always yelling at me and shouting. Very yeah, shouty. Well, that will happen as soon as, as soon as you put me into some sort of harm's way. That will happen naturally. Okay, here we go. Oh, we're being lowered. Ooh, here we go. 
Oh. Okay, all, all, already the cockpit looks like an eagle. So I think that's to make you feel like you're in a combat mode, you know? Like a. Oh man, it's very loud. I don't, the engines sound very loud. Ooh, this stops on a dime. Uh, watch this, guys. I'm going fast. Well, not fast, but then I stop. That is an immediate stop. That's a powerful. There's some powerful brakes here, Sparks. And this is space brakes. Space brakes. Now I painted mine red so that it goes really fast. Oh, look at that. That's nice. I haven't I haven't done much at all with this thing. It, this is a, this is only the second time I've used it. Um, but so far, just the by the looks, it looks fantastic. Look at this thing. It looks kind of like a Porsche, like the back of it. Now, I know that Ed Woods, one of the developers there at Frontier, he's a huge car guy. He loves cars, and I wonder if he had anything to do with the way this thing looks. Look at that. It really does look like a uh, uh, not scare, but a scorpion with a big old thing on the back, and then sparks. So right here, there's like this cool multi-cannon looking thing, and then this thing on the side here, that's not that's not a um, a license plate camera. I know that's what you were thinking, but it's not. It's a missile launcher. Can you believe that? They put a missile launcher in this thing. Look at this. Now it's so no license plate camera. No license. Unfortunately, not. Maybe it'll be an engineering mod. Um, they'll put on later on, but I don't know. There's no news whether or not there's going to be an SRV engineering engineers. But I imagine that once they do, then that will be like a license plate camera thing, so you can do speed traps and stuff like that and get some. Get some it's kind of like a, a kill warrant scanner, and um, but it's just for like anti-speeding SRVs. This is all real. Okay, let's see here. Now another thing I noticed about this thing is that it's really slow. Like right here, I'm 19, 20. I'd be at like 30 by now if I was in the regular SRV. It does not have a fast acceleration. Another thing I saw about it, I've noticed from last night, is that uh, it's uh, jump jets? Watch this. Look, see, I got all pips engines, right? Here goes my jump. That's it. All done. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about. I don't know if, again, it stops on a dime. I don't know if the reason why the jump jets are so weak is because it's heavy, because it's armored. Or it just has really, it doesn't have a lot of jump jets. Because as you can see, um, on a regular SRV, the ju the, the um, little jump rockets are like on the outside. Let's see what, let's try to find where these ones are. Alright, so if we go like this. Oops. Oh, they're underneath. Okay, I see. Hold on, I really want to see where these jets are. You've lost your jets, sir. Lost my jets. I don't know why I insist on driving <laughs> while I do the jets. I can, I can like literally just do the jets from here. Okay, let me see here. If I go this like this, make it wide. Then I like this, and I look up. Okay. There they are. Oh look, they don't even have vents for them. There's not even like um te a textured vent. It just comes out, materializes right out of the the frame. I don't know. That's kind of lame. Is it? Oh, that is. You know what it kind of looks like to what? me? What? It kind of looks like it should be a transformer toy. Like, doesn't it look like it should? <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it look like you should be able to fold some of those pieces away uh -huh. and turn it into? 
Yeah. And talking robot. Mm -hmm. and, like it, it like stands up and starts punching this this kung fu action. Yeah, you don't. I don't. There's no texture for the the vents. That's kind of lame. Um, let's see here. Let's see, people are talking to me here. Most of us aren't in, in invite. Just, they just oh. don't care anymore about the game. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try to get everybody into instance. I'm gonna invite him to team, and then I'll invite Cryjoy to team, which may be my undoing. Then we'll get. Oh, jeez, keeps moving around. Okay. Then once these guys are here in instance, we can do some stuff. Oh my! Uh, my ship, my SRV wants to fire missiles. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn it into not missile mode. Um, just reacting to chat, Battle Droid, when have we never experienced instance problems? Yeah. You could probably just picky that comment. I think I find there's instance scene problems when I've been in the instance for like ever before a, uh, before we start streaming. Oh, and I, I'm starting to see people though. Oh man, that is, that is not much jump at all on this thing. Now, once we're all here, we're going to do some, uh, a little bit of a wacky race. Just a tiny bit. Is it more race or is it more wacky? I think it's going to be more wacky. Okay, here's another buddy. Oh, look at this! Another, uh, orca. Fantastic. I, th for some reason, I thought Cryodroid was in an SRV, but it's just a courier. I wonder if Cryo has a, a cool ship skin, um, SRV skin, because he usually does. He's got a yellow one. I almost went for yellow, but uh, red was pretty cool. Well, also, yellow wouldn't be very Christmassy, now would it? No, that's right. Also, this this is in an underwater um, episode. Okay, I'm going to... Go back here. Now the one thing about the I've noticed about the scorpion, which is we're gonna test out right here, is that it's very maneuverable. It re it turns on a dime, it stops on a dime. So its ability to just be used as a race car. Now we're not even going into like combat mode yet, but using it as a race car is fantastic. Okay, cool. We got a purple one over here. Oh man, we're getting all the colors of the rainbow. That thing's gonna crash right into it. It's gonna crash right into that thing, and it's gonna blow up. Oh, he's scanning Cryojoid's thing now. We got we got another person over here. Oh, fantastic! We got so many folks. That's a nice set of crate. Yeah, yeah, I like that um, skin there. All right, so we're gonna go over here. We're gonna go up and over this thing here. So those of you who are wondering, what we're gonna drive around. We're gonna drive around here, and. We're gonna test out and then go this way and then go across there. Hold on, let me redo this. There we go. And then this looks bad, but oh wait, we do this. Okay, come on. Okay, I'm trying to get 100% freedom in the camera. Let's go. For those asking, we are at the Ghost Giraffe Tourism Hub. Yeah, yeah, we're in he the system called Helveti, which I've I've been made aware means hell in S Scandinavian or something. <laughs> Thanks, Frontier. Thanks for putting our hub in, in hell, <laughs> in Scandinavian <laughs> hell. All right, you guys um, that are here, uh, wait wait here while I'm just going to give a tour. Oh, actually, you can slightly follow me. With it, with it, we're going to do a really fast racetrack here, just to see the handling of this thing. Whoa, sort of a top-heavy. 
No, no. How, how, how does it handle? Like, we, let's pretend that you're like right. on one of those like auto shows. And yeah. You're, like comparing it to the SRV. You be, be sure to like make up some like 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 words like uh, you know uh, uh, like use like the word torque like yeah. engineering terms. Oh, you know? you know this has so much torque. Um, I think it's about si 75 um, TPS. Uh, and um, yeah, it's it's a really it handles best on on metallic surfaces. So if you're oh wait no wait every time you say handles you have to describe handles as though um, it handles like and then you have to describe something that you've never handled right that's how they always do it, mm. it handles like a dream for instance what does that mean oh it handles like a wet horse um, I don't know if you've ever been on an unbridled wet chevet. But uh, it handles like one of those, and I gotta tell you, it's uh, it's a really dream to fly. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And when I say fly, <laughs> I mean riding around on a wet horse with no huh? gear. Huh? Huh? Well, I mean, I, I, no one's ever done it, right? You said to make something very obscure. Well, no, but people have. I just didn't think that you had. Oh, I have not. There are people who have ridden horses in the rain. I've I've ridden on a horse on, on a, a beach, um, but I've it didn't get wet. Okay, that'll that'll have to do. Yes, this is the best episode of Top Gear ever. Yeah. So yeah. we we need to do some like Top. Gear I've never like, seen an episode uh, of Top Gear, so I really don't know how to talk about things. Oh great. Okay, so let me let, let's do like a, a oh. an operator thing. Okay. I'll explain to you yeah. how it kind of works, and then you on the fly. Uh -huh. Then try to imitate Top Gear. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So usually, what happens in Top Gear is they'll do things like the, there'll be three of them. Mm -hmm. There's three There's of us here. Yeah. Okay. And then so what ends up happening is they each usually have some sort of challenge. Uh huh. And their own car that they're gonna have to do it with. Yeah. Yeah. Like one one was like you only have two thousand dollars. You need to like buy with with two thousand dollars. You need to be a teenager, and so you had to like. First, you had to buy a car and the insurance. Yeah. Number two, you had to like, um, like outfit your car to look cool or something like that. And then, like, uh, one of the challenges was like, roll like roll your car quietly into your house after midnight, and they had mm -hmm. like a dB meter. So whoever could get their car onto the driveway the quietest would win. So, so that's what it means. You need like you need like three different challenges okay. to show off. The first challenge is. is the one within us, which is not to kill each other. And I think that's the biggest challenge there is, right? Um, second challenge is to go over this thing and and then get this thing, this this uh, this wet horse across that that metallic bridge to the other side. Now the lack of jump uh, boost this thing has um, really hampers it, but don't think of it as a limitation, but rather an invitation to being your best driving self. Does that sound good? Yes, it does. Okay, here we go. No, no, I, I, no, no wait, I, I think huh? that sounds good, but I think that there's one more thing you need to, to know oh. in order to make this official topic. Okay, thing, okay? yeah. So. The, Jeremy Clarkson's one of the big characters in Top Gear, mm -hmm. and one of the reasons I've heard of his what, farm. A huge I, heard, I heard he has a farm. He, that's what he does now. Yeah, yeah. But apparently, like, uh, he didn't like like the you know conditions of the series or whatever, and uh -huh. punched his producer, and then I think I kicked out of yeah. Top Gear or whatever. Um, so at some point, I think it would be appropriate for you to do the equivalent of like punching your producer, okay. or you know, punching somebody. All right. In that case, we'll have to find. Um, disembowel ego and then shoot a missile at him okay here we go all right guys now it's not about being first it's about finishing so make sure you finish and uh, let's get let's get to it here we go going up this thing here whoa that is like a wall <laughs> okay I think this camera is gonna run into this thing Woohoo! oh now you see the the steering wheel. The it's it's a four wheel steering. I don't know if there are many cars in real life that have four wheel steering, but I gotta say I think that's what makes it like such a good handling car. 
All right, you guys go forward. What does it handle like, Mars? What does it handle like? It handles a lot like, um, kind of like, like a a, a molding, a burning goat. You know, it has that smell, right? That it's really trying, but it just isn't. It just doesn't do well. Wait, that's. I don't think that answers your question. Okay, so here we go. Quick. Well, it, it, that, no, it actually creates a lot more questions than it answers about a burning goat. Burning goat. It handles like a demonic sacrificial altar. Yeah. Yeah, like that. It handles like a demonic sacrificial altar. Um, and I've been to a couple, and I gotta say, this is the best. Okay, here we go. I'm doing a lot better in ex external than I am in uh, internal. There we go. Pretty nice. You gotta be really strategic with your little hops because you only have so much boost. Now I've been told uh, by Disemboweled Ego that uh, it handles really well up hills. And let's, uh, let's showcase that by introducing a wall. That case in point, this one here. Let's position the camera. Really nice. Okay, let's see how it does uphill. Um, and in this, but in this case, the hill is a wall. Does that very? Does that sound Top Gear? There we go. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, sure, sure. there's a wall. I've just run into it. Not so good against walls. But hold on. I'm not one to shy away from a challenge. There we go again. And no, no, <laughs> a ninety degree, a ninety degree. Uh, I think might be its limit. Let's try one more time. Oh, that was kind of cool. Kind of bounced off there. Look at that. Let's go do this. Oh, the the green one looks like a frog. Actually, uh, Mars, do you know who's who in terms of colors? Like, who's in the orange, who's in the green? Let's see. I believe Crydroid is in the yellow. Green is Kermit. And I'm in the red. Oh, that makes sense because I'm the red planet. Mars. Alright. Oh, yeah. Look at that. I'll climb out the ball. I did it. Okay, so. Um, gotta say, Sparks, it's, this is gonna be one of those heavy handed reviews. Um. Where uh, there's there's like a feature like oh it does really good uh, on on uh, slopes and then you do a slope that no car can do it against and then they just give it a, a minus review. It's like I was uh, led to believe this was good on uh, high inclines and I tried to uh, tried it against the wall and I gotta say it did not perform as advertised. Is, is the full name just Scorpion? Yeah. Is it just called Scorpion? Scorpion. Okay. Well now we're gonna go to the uh, the Rumble Bubble. Now, everybody, head to the uh, the Rumble Bubble. I ho hopefully, people know where that is. Oh my God! What is that noise? We're going to the Thunderdome to duke it out. While you're doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of give like a car and driver review. Okay. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Speaking of which, the slightly forward cant of the new Scorpions now is a, a nod to the SRVs of old, accentuated by LED lighting all around. Scorpion projects a handsome, appropriately stocky look that is immediately recognizable as a Scorpion. <laughs> You'll say that the stretched proportions of this long wheelbase model are exaggerated when sitting on the standard 18-inch wheels, but that visual imbalance is lessened with the optional 20 or 21 inches. <laughs> In any case. The design always looks much more cohesive than the SRV's last attempt at a three-row SRV, the SRV. Okay, uh, we're in the Thunderdome. We're going to do some scorpion on scorpion action here. Okay. There we are. Actually, before we do that, we should all target <laughs> this. Uh, I wish you were here, Sparks, because then 
the, the, another thing that's great about this um, SRV is that two people can be inside of it. So you could be in this gunner position here, right? I mean, and then uh, I want us all, once everybody's here, we're going to go ahead and target this Goliath with our missiles and just see how well it does. Okay, I see two... I mean, do you want me to, do, do you want me to actually be your gunner or, or no? If you can, yeah. Okay, let me let me go suit up, and I'll and I'll, all right, I'll, all right. I'll get there. Okay, cool. Okay, so I see we got four of us here. All right, now you're gonna have to type in chat, uh, not in chat, but in game. Let me know if you're ready to go with your um, to fire. I don't know how we'll do it. If uh, can I see chat this way? Okay, all right, everyone's ready. Okay, Frakes, we're going to help you in just a sec. Alright, guys, go ahead and fire. Let's do it. Okay, the reload. There we go. Oh, we got it. Let's take out this guy, too. Oh, that's another Goliath, but is it just further away? So the gun is cool. The gun... The gun takes a while to, uh, speed up. Oh, this, thing, this feels fun. I like Griff Star 77. It's kind of... Five scorpions enter, one scorpion leaves. That thing's cool. All right, everybody, everybody fire. Let me see, I want to see this. That's yeah, cool. So this gun, it takes a, a second to like uh, ramp up. But once it goes, man. So okay, so over the things over there. Oh, nice one! There were three Goliaths here. What? We usually only have one Goliath. Tie the race cars here. Cryojoids here. And disemboweled. All right. Let's do it. I just seen your shields, Cryo. Do I take do I take um splash damage? Let's see. Hold on. Let me see if there's any splash damage here. I don't know. I don't know if I'm getting splash damage with the um. Hey, get really next to me, disemboweled. Is there any splash damage? I don't think so. Can't shoot because of my money situation. Oh. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let me try yeah, X-Men uh, 2008. Um, the reason why we're not crashing the game with the fine overload is because uh, Mars has very specific code Ghost giraffe. Uh, they 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 have made exceptions for how we rack up fines. People are gonna believe you, Sparks, and then they're gonna write about <laughs> this in the forums. <laughs> All right, where, how do I get back inside? Okay. Well, I honestly, honestly, like, if you think about it, Mars, like, yeah, if you were to have like a massive like data graph of like what's going on in the game uh -huh. for analytics. I bet you that just this time on Saturdays, it's just suddenly like, why? Why is suddenly all the fines? Like, why is there so many fines? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a ghost stream. <laughs> so now that goes your stream. Okay, now here's some hills. And I'm gonna go down here. Let's 
see how it does with these hills here. Also, what I'm curious about is how it does against um, small rocks. Because the, the regular SRV is notorious for uh, spinning out of, wildly out of control at, this, at this, just the sight of a rock. Now, so Mars, I don't feel like that would ever be in a normal, like, car and driver review. Like, uh -huh. <laughs> I don't think I've ever read a car and driver review. Like, you know, what I really think about the Jeep Grand Cherokee is I'm curious how it does with small rocks. <laughs> well, you know, with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, they, you know, they do say like it can it can leap s large boulders and single bound or something like that. What? I don't know. No, don't no you drive? <laughs> yeah, you drive Jeeps like in like r like riverbeds, right? That's what you use them for. No, I know, but they don't leap. They don't. They don't. Leap, like, wrong. Into the air. Yeah, you, you, you like you like rev it backward, and then you you give it a one two, and then it, it'll like jump from one rock to the other jump rock. If if a Greek if, if a Jeep Grand Cherokee leapt into the air to avoid small rocks, I would go out and buy one today. <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> Maybe we're sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee, All right? You don't know. That, that would be. <laughs> Jeep Grand Cherokee, the only car that jumps over rocks. Large boulders, specifically this one here that we made a ramp for. Well, I should be the one talking about cars, honestly, because I've never I've never owned one. I don't even have a driver's license like my entire life. Wait, really? Uh-huh. My dream is to have. How is that possible? My my dream is to have a pilot's license before I've I've gotten a driver's license, and from my point of view, I'm halfway there. Oh man, I really want you to accomplish that dream, Mars. That would be beautiful. That'd be a beautiful story. Get a pilot license before driver license. Uh, or just a pilot's license and never get a driver's license. Either one. Down yeah, to, yeah, those yeah. are cool outcomes. Oh look at that! There's rock. A Jeep Grand Cherokee, that wouldn't happen to them. Hold on, time out. What is this? Oh, I'm falling over. Hold on. There's something underneath my SRV. Did it look like... Sparks, it looks like there's a SRV bay underneath my SRV. Is anybody else? Is that like a yo dog thing? Yeah, I think yo dog. I heard you like SRV, so you put an SRV in your SRV. I think that's what it is. Oh, let me see. Yeah, yeah, right there. What is this? <laughs> what is that? This is a transmission, I, s I assume, right? Um, what is that? Those are like the heat. That's the anti-heat thing. Those are the heat sinks. But yeah, there's an SRV bay underneath the SRV. Interesting. Yo, dog. We heard that you liked SRVs. Guys, you should be really careful because I could flip over and then crush you with my giant tires of doom. I feel like they're planting. Oh, do they have jump? They have the Christmas sweaters. Oh, they got the jumpers. All right, I'm gonna I'm going upright. Letting everybody know I'm going upright. Whoa, that is the ground. Oh. Most of chat is is agreeing that it's probably the cargo scoop on an SRV. Bed. Oh. <laughs> but as chat is also pointed out, you can put an RC uh, SRV in there. Oh what? Oh, you can put like a remote control oh, SRV. Oh, that's probably what it is. Well, you know, like we have the cargo scoop on our regular SRV, but you never see anything, right? Hold on, let me let me try to open the cargo scoop. Let's see if any animation happens. Which would be really funny, considering they didn't texture any jump jets, but they'll t they'll texture this. All right, let's see here. Okay, so here's my cargo scoop. Yeah, it's it's on. 
Yeah, no, nothing. Oh, so I'm stuck under the ground. Okay, so it's a cargo scoop. I believe you. You just can't see it. So they have a, a, a spot where the cargo scoop would be, but it's not animated. We look at the ground, though. That's kind of neat. Well, I wonder how that would actually work. Like, what kind of mechanism would you want for a cargo scoop? Mm -hmm. From an animation perspective, like you'd want the doors to open up, and then like what? Like, a uh, like robotic hand. Yeah, a little. Yeah, or? exactly. A little like robotic hand on one of those like uh, teles telescoping things. You know, you know, like the like the cartoon punching glove. You know? Right. Well, well, would you want that, or would you want it to just be like a very articulate robotic hand holding like a dustbin? Yeah, yeah, like a, or like a little sweeper thing, like the yeah. small brush. But like for some reason, rather than attaching the sweeper to like a stick, it would like you would they would have gone to the trouble to animate a robotic hand holding a sweeper. You know? Yeah, yeah. Maybe you can um, buy that as a cosmetic. I mean, you can make yourself into a freaking snowman. So, so why not, right? What's stopping them? <laughs> we should make an online petition for this. Oh, I think if we're going to do that, we should just go straight and petition for SRV Fortnite dances. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, kind of like they, they, they leap up and then they point their tires, like, that way, this yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want, I, want, I want to be able to purchase the SRV doing, like, the Carlton. Like, uh -huh. I want to be able to purchase that. Yeah, I think um, I think really that's just the end game of any game to have the Carlton put into your game. <laughs> that's when you know you've jumped the person jumping the shark. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's the rocks. Ah, uh, look at that. Rock, rock one, scarab zero. Just to double check. Yep, that's a rock. Now another thing. Um, now we're playing around with the scorpions, and we're gonna we're about to take off. We're gonna go to a combat zone. There's a system just one one jump over, and they have a war there. So we're gonna go participate in war. Um, so hopefully you'll be online by the time that happens. But um, one thing we haven't talked about, Sparks, is that the they made an improvement to the regular SRV, in that no no longer does it just carry two canisters of cargo sparks get this four can you count all the way to four i know um, I, I can try all right let's see let's see let's see copernicus let's see you One, count to four uh-huh two uh oh um I'm stuck <laughs> i beached myself Hold on. We interrupt Zark, uh, Z <laughs> Sparks counting the four with I've beached my, my SRV. Look at this. Uh, one. This is this is why you need a, a uh, third wheel. Two. Look at this. Two uh, squared. Two squared. Oh, you cheated. Look at this. <laughs> so if you run over a large hill that goes underneath you, you're done. You're gonna have to uninstall your game, do a, a, a clear save, because you're not going anywhere. That's funny. Okay, so I missed it. Did you can did you make it all the way to four? You squared. Alright, so you didn't. Okay, so anyways, the SRV, the regular SRV, has four ton cargo space. They found some room in the back. And now it can do all the way to four. What do you think of that sparks? I want to know. Do you think that's gonna? Why? That's, do you think that's gonna make everybody return to the game? What? Do, you, do you think <laughs> yeah, that's, that's gonna what's gonna keep the, the console people um, uh, from not like um, uh, da, uh, what's it called uninstalling while they wait? Is, was that just like a, a nice to have that they added? Like why? Why were they like of all the things that like you could be working on? Like that was has that ever been a concern for you? Where you're like, darn it, you know what I really wish is I just had two more cargo pieces in my SRV. Ooh, there it is. 
You know, there have been times where I've been like, yes, uh, I need more cargo space. And, um, and frankly, I haven't had it, you know? But having said that, I, when I think about that, I don't think of like two more, I think of like 10. Right, that's what I'm saying is like, okay, if like this is annoying, I guess like maybe from a lore perspective, you can't just like go from like, well, we suddenly found room for like eight other things that were normally <laughs> only room for two. But I really just feel like if you're gonna like make more room, like you said, like make it so you have like a proper right uh, trunk, a proper trunk to fill. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna say about the Scorpion right now, if you're going over terrain like this, you might end up beaching yourself where because there's the lack of uh, a middle row of tires. You can get propped up on a rock, and that'll be the end of your day. Oh wait, no. You could just use your rockets. Never mind, I'm dumb. But having said that, <laughs> you don't have much rocket fuel. So if you're on a high G planet, and you like kind of teeter totter yourself on a on a on an outcropping, like as you find here, you might have to blow up your uh, your scorpion. You need to walk home. Let's see here. Walk of shame. A walk of shame. Okay, wait. Now we're gonna go get some trouble. Let's see here. And board ship. I like the sound it makes. You hear that sound? That's a that's a new sound. I don't know if that's ain't worth anything to you, but there you go. X Man two thousand eight says it's more to differentiate the two and define the roles. I think the biggest thing that defines the two is one has um, a missile launcher and the other one does not. I think that's a dead giveaway. Oh no, we're being shot at! Get down, get down! Get low to the ground! They can't shoot you if you're below the sea level. There you go. Oh boy, I forgot we're wanted. Okay, just gotta stay low. Why is there so much geometry? Look at all this geometry, what's going on? What gives? There we go, oh my goodness, my textures are so weird. Okay, I did it, I successfully avoided death. My shiny metal spaceship. Oh, look at that, so pretty, so so elegant. Oh, look at those explosions. Look at that. And that's home, by the way. <laughs> look at that. Oh, somebody said that they have red um, flat cannons. I don't think you guys are going to catch up. You can try. See you later. I'm going faster than you can ever fly, ever. Bye bye, courier. I can probably outrun your flak. Okay. Now let's go to space. Let's see here. Oops. Okay, here we go. Okay, we're gonna go fight in a war. There's a war over here. Don't ask me how I know. Actually, ask me how I know because I want to be on something very impressive. How do you know? Um, because, okay, so when you need to buy these things, there it is. <gasps> How did I do that? Um, so to buy this SRV, you can't just go to any, um, shop and just buy it. You can't do that, Sparks. You have to go to an outfitting that's in a, that has a military economy. So I found this out the hard way, where I, I went to Mace Windu Station over here, and I tried to <laughs> I tried to buy it. I was like, well, no, it's not in the game. And then I was like, no, it is in the game. So I went to another station somewhere else, and it wasn't there. And I went to another station, it wasn't there. And I thought, oh, maybe I should ask the Discord. And I thought, oh, no, it's embarrassing. I always ask them how to play the game. So I, I instead, I asked the internet. And the internet said, hey, go to a military economy place. And I said, cool, I'll tell everyone I knew this already, but I think I've blown it. In any case, um, so 
uh, the first military place I went to was at war. Uh, and so that's my story. What do you think? Pretty cool story, right? One for the ages. Um, it had a beginning, middle, and end. It did. Uh, that's about all I'll say for it. Yeah. All right, so this is the chrome in space. Now, I get that chrome is very reflective, and in space it's very dark. So basically I'm just reflecting darkness all around me. So there's not that much to <laughs> get upset about, but I feel like it should be a little bit shinier. I don't know. Okay, so actually, um, what you're describing, there's there's a paint uh -huh. that I've always wanted to put on, like a nice car. Um, and what it is, is it's not chrome, because chrome is like metallic, right? Yeah. It's a paint that has like the exact description of what you're saying. Like at night, it is black, your car is black. And then during the day, it is silver. And it just, it has like the perfect, it's not like a mirror like chrome, but it's like, it like it's like either you have a, like a light car or a dark car, depending on if it's day or night. Mm -hmm. That's cool. It sounds dangerous though. Like you would need some like re a lot of the reflectors and just to make sure you're seen at night. What if you don't want to be seen at night? Mark? Then you're going to be run into by deer and stuff. Do you ever think about that? You run into my deer and stuff anyway, because deer jump and they go, ah! and they see headlights and then they just pause there. Well, turn off your headlights. They won't, they won't see you and you won't run into them. They'll just stand there, and then you won't run into them. I don't. I don't know the easy way out of this situation. What do you do, right? It's a catch twenty-two. Is a deer in, on the highway, and it, well, maybe if you honk, do they respond to honking, Sparks? I don't know. I don't drive car. No, no. I've, have you ever? This is kind of sad, but it's. I think it's important for people to know. Have you ever been in a car when it hits a deer? No, I've been in one that hit a mongoose, though. Uh, okay, screw my story. What's your story? Uh, we're driving to Hawaii, and the mongoose decides to run across the road, and then it says, "Oh wait, I'm not going to cross the road," and heads back, and ended up going katunk on the back um, tire wheel. Okay, well, it's kind of the same with deer, except for, like, your car is damaged, too. Cause yeah. Like... Ours was a, yeah, ours was a rental car, so we couldn't, we couldn't, we were, <laughs> we're too afraid to look. Maybe it was damaged? I don't know. It's really, it's, it's, it's really important as a, here's a, here's a ghost giraffe's uh, tourism safety tip. All right. You can break for a deer, but you should not swerve. That's true. I think that's, even for dogs, they say that. So what do you think about um, AI though, right? Is AI going to know what's deer and what's people? Like it already does. for a self-driving car? Does it know? Yeah, it knows. It can smell them? It knows the difference by, yeah, by smell. <laughs> smell. <laughs> it can really smell that far. That's crazy. Okay, so the rest of us, we are in, where are we? We are in the system here, I'm about to tell you. It is called HIP 5253, very se sequential. Everyone can remember that, 5253. And we are at Planet 7A, or Moon 7A, I should say. And we're going to participate um, in the, the war here that they're having uh, here at the Luscious, the Lushmore Agricultural Biome. So apparently people are fighting over carrots and broccoli. Okay, let's go out from here. Uh-oh. Come on, can go up. Here we go. So head over here, and we won't start the war without you. We're going to go just on the outskirts of town. I don't know why I said it like that. We're just going to outskirts of town so we don't trigger the event. So if you're coming here on your ownsy ownsy, just wait, wait for us, because we don't want to trigger it till everyone's ready to get here. And when I say everyone, I mean maybe two more people. Mars, you, you do have a unique opportunity here. Oh, I do? Tell me. Yeah, well, think about it. Think about how horrible war is. It's so bad. It's really not good, right? No. Like, lots of people die. Yeah. Suffering. Gas prices and go up. You, yeah. You're, you're in a unique position uh -huh. to be able to stop a war right now. Oh. But by murder, you mean? No, by just not 
just not entering the conflict. Like, like you could just not go over there, and then there would be no war. Oh boy, I think it's already started. Honestly, I think I, I just saw a bunch of explosions. Yeah, it's explosions. All right, just screw it. Kill no, them, kill them all. <laughs> kill them all. Okay, no, no, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. Okay. All right, so this is Ghost Giraffe, um, Tourist Hub, people, us, right? I say, I say, I'm with Sparks. Let's end war, right? Let's, let's go after everybody. Don't join a faction. Wait, wait, that's not what I was. Don't join a faction. What? what? Sparks says, let's end this war by destroying both sides. Why is my geometry like this? This is crazy. <laughs> that, has that, wait, I'm just trying to think. Historically, has that ever been done where two people are fighting and so a third force comes in and just murders both sides? It has to have, right? Well, normally, like, one side will join with one side uh -huh. when they enter a conflict. But is it, is anybody <laughs> ever like, screw you all, we're the third, like, <laughs> we're going to kill you both. Well, you know, if it hasn't, it's, it's, it's happening today. This emboweled has exploded. I don't know how. Well, that's why war is so sad. Okay, all right. I mean, what, what, is, what does it mean? All right, everyone. What it means is, once you get here, everything except for us, except for the humans, are targets. Okay? I'm going to go ahead and land over here. Just outside of town. Maybe about two kilometers out. And we're going to stroll in. All, like, really cool. Here we go. There's a parking spot right here. There we go. Alright, everyone. Let's get ready to roll out. <laughs> X-Men says, They're making broccoli that tastes like hamburgers. We must have them. Okay, so that's lore now. Alright, everyone. We want the broccoli hamburgers, okay? All right, we don't want it going to market, and they're going to. They're, you know what's going to happen, Sparks? They're going to market up a billion dollars. We don't want that. We want it to be a sensible price, like five dollars. That's a sensible well, price. Well, you can't. You can't stop that, Mars. That's, yes, that's, we can. That's, that's, that's inflation. So what we're going to do is both sides want those those broccoli flavored hamburgers, and we're gonna we're gonna say no. Ghost Draft Tourist Hub. We're going to be the sole proprietors of said hamburger um, flavor. And and we're gonna stop the war by destroying both sides and take the hamburgers. That sounds like a worthy and, cause. And, 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 uh, and also. And also. Uh, since we're since since we're destroying both sides. Yeah. Uh, you know that that will ruin their that will ruin the influx of their credits in the economy, thereby reducing inflation. So it's an economic war as well. What Sparks said. You know, Sparks can be the money guy figures it out but then now we're gonna be the sole proprietors of of that okay all right everybody let's 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 line up in a line like like reservoir dogs and <laughs> get over there hold on where, where are where is it anyway where are all those markers in the sky does anybody know okay let me just take a look at everyone all right let me see guys. all right oh yeah who'd want to mess with us Who'd want to mess with us? Look at this. Is three, where's our green guy? Our green guy's not here. There's two of you in, in green jumpers, so that's cool. I'm assuming this is disemboweled, because he has a helmet that looks like that. We got Cryojoid. We have myself here. This, I'll see who it is. I think that's Tyler Racecar over there. Purple? Who's purple? Who's this? Purple is... William. Fantastic. Alright, everyone. I wish I had theme music for this, because this is going to be cool. I hope this is the direction of, of where we're going. Because here we go. Let's roll out. Oh, I feel like a tank commander of a light armored brigade. Is this the right direction, everyone? Are we going the right way? <laughs> Alright. 
That'd be nice, smooth. That's always something you want to hear from your. Oh, there it is. Commanding officer. No, this is the right way. Okay, are we going in the right direction, everyone? This is the right way, guys. Don't worry, your trait, your trust has not been in vain. I, I know the way. Imagine Lawrence Arabia said that. It's like the train's coming around 12, I think. Is it 12? Wait, what date is it? Imagine missing that train. Okay, I see explosions. I see spaceships warping into the ground. Okay, there are now vultures in the air. Okay, this is where they grow the broccoli flavored hamburgers. Right here in these tents. Disgusting. I mean, great. These will all be ours. I don't see any evidence of uh, there being warring parties. Except for us just showing up and deciding to destroy everything here. What if, Sparks, what if we, we, we came a minute after peace had been declared? Oh, no, wait. There's There we go. There's some, there's some rude dudes over here. There they are. Rude dude squad. Let's go get them. There we go. Oh, man. Oh, boy. There's a body. Okay. Now, you'll see in your upper left-hand corner to join a faction. Fight that urge. Do not join faction. We're ending this war for everybody. Okay, there's some dudes over here, guys. Come towards my SRV. I just need a clear shot of them. I just want to run them over. Okay, hold on, hold on. This guy over here. But there's a fresh batch right over here. They're lined up like, uh... Lined up like bowling pins. Oh, there's one. Okay, here we go. There we go. Hi, guys. I got one. I got another one. Okay, going this way. I got that guy. Okay, this is bad. This is bad. Alright, go, go. Let's move out this way. Okay, they're going to have to find me. Okay, I'm kiting them. I'm kiting them. Somebody come from behind me and uh, take these guys out. Alright, going back in the turret. Where are they? Over there. Okay, I'm in tank mode. Someone's taking out the... the Anti-tank gun, so that's good. I'm gonna go on this hill. Okay, is that good bad guy? Bad guy. He's dead guy. All right. There's nobody over here. All right, I've, I've secured the hill. That's what you do in a war, right? You secure hills. Yeah, you you have to secure hills. I got. So I secured point. the hill. Now I'm gonna abandon the hill. That's the other thing you do in war. You abandoned the... Oh, boy. Fire and missile. Man, they're just flying when you get them. Oh, right here. Right here. Okay. There's friends. Okay. I have friends coming over here to help me help reinforce the hill. I've inadvertently joined one of the sides, so I have to shoot that side. If you see a green side, <laughs> you have make sure you, you join the uh, the side you joined. You f shoot against the the people you sh you joined. Does that make sense? It does. I don't. I don't think it does. Okay, watch out. 
Watch out, uh, Disemboweled. You got some bogeys ahead of you. Leonardo's over there. Oh. Okay, you know what they say, Sparks? Is this a hill you want to die on? This tiny hill, it's barely a hill, it's more it's more of a mound. But yes. Alright. Watch your flanks, guys. Alright, Sparks, let me know uh, if anybody in chat says anything that I need to be aware of. Yeah, they're, you know, they're just, they're just chilling. I, wh why this hill? Why this hill is the first one I saw, and I felt that was very strategic, in that we could make a getaway to a much larger hill over there. How is that... You wouldn't know, Sparks. You you weren't here. You weren't there. Okay, I took I took the hill. I'm continuing to take the hill. I'm defending hey, against. Hey, hey, Mar yeah. Mar Mars. Uh, you want to hear a slightly offensive joke? Yes, always. Okay. Okay. How many Vietnam vets does it take to screw in a light bulb? How many? You wouldn't understand. You weren't there. Okay. Okay, guy. <laughs> Oh no! Somebody's shields are down. Whose shields are down? Are my shields are down? Are my shields down? How have my shields gone down? I don't know. Yeah, it's a mystery. It's a mystery. We'll never know. We'll never know. <laughs> the ability to know, excuse me, you'll just never have it. Temporary defenses. That's a thing? Oh my. They just don't stop coming, Sparks. I'm being shot at by something. Watch out, who is this? Freaks. Don't no friendly fire, watch out. Okay, my shields are almost back up. They are now back up. Okay guys. We need to get a better position. This this place blows. We need to go into that area over think, there. I don't I don't think you you Whoa. Really enter warfare here with a lot of uh, uh, strategy, I think. Maybe some strategy would, would help. Yeah, okay. We're going to do some strategy, guys. All right? Uh, the uh, Apparently, our armchair general over here says we should n abandon the hill that we fought and s spent so much um, blood fighting for and go this way. Is that right, Sparks? Is that what you want? I wouldn't call myself an armchair general because I'm not... Have an armchair. I found a new hill, guys. It's this one here. Target this guy here. Then target these guys and fire a missile. Alright, we're doing it. We're mowing them down. It really helps when they think we're on their side. Little do they know that you're on your own side. Oh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> you both thought of running into those dudes at the same time. Okay. We got a golden asp here um, providing air support. Okay, I think I think it's good. I 
don't think we can take out those um those vultures unfortunately so far I'm really liking the combat of this thing yeah the spread on this multi cannon it's really inaccurate at first but the faster the more you you uh, pull down the trigger the more accurate it gets I think Oh my gosh, it's shock and awe here. Commander Xerix is attempting to sit on the other guys. Careful. Watch out, Commander Xerix has the upper hand. I, I, I wouldn't go around shooting at him. Disemboweled egos here. We got the cavalry's arrived. All right, let's move forward. Okay, try not to get stuck in between things here. There's a dude over there. Uh oh, there's all the dudes here. Oh my god. So, as a target rich environment. A target rich environment. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, there's still, there's still some more. Oh boy. It's the guys who think we're on their team. Watch out. Guys, watch out. There we go, there we go. Asp is making... Oh my goodness. There we go. There we go. Okay, we're still getting shot at. That was a close one. I think... I think we're going to have more reinforcements coming right on top of us. I think I, I chose a drop zone. Do you even need me? Yeah. I need you to be in the SRV as the uh, the the shooter dude, and then I drive around. The shooter dude. Yeah, the gunner. Is that is that an official term? Mm-hmm. I need oh, I need gunner. Okay. I need to be the gunner. Okay. 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 I will I will I will come and join you then. Here we go. Okay. Are you? Where are you? Okay, everyone. I'm I'm coming in. Okay, do you know um, what planet we're on? Uh, no, does that matter? Yeah, because that's how you're going to join us. You have to physically be here. Okay. I thought you, you said that I could I could share into your cockpit. Uh, yes, but I think this is a crew thing. I don't think it's like a, a, a telepresence thing. Okay, I'll get there. You shouldn't be too far away. Um, for those asking, we are at HIP 5253-7A, and the settlement is Lushmore Agricultural Biome. They're making broccoli-flavored hamburgers. No, they're making hamburger-flavored broccoli. That's right, and we don't want them to um, be the sole proprietors. These two factions are fighting over who gets the patent, and uh, we decided none of them deserve it. And we're gonna take it. Uh oh, they're all here. Get them! Get them! So when you get here, don't choose a faction. Just, to, just kill everybody who's not in a scarab. I mean, a scorpion. So far, so good. All right, I need to re do some repairs. Let's see here. Going to my right here. SRV repair. Repair that hole. All right, cool. All right, guys. If you haven't repaired your hole, go ahead and do so right now, because you never know if, when you might. Also, let's see. Redo my ammo too, right? 
Does it rearm my my launcher? <gasps> oh, it does. Let's see here. Oh, fantastic. Okay, good. So if you run out of ammo, um, uh, what's it called launcher ammo, you can use the uh, repair thing. I know that sounds very obvious. Oh my goodness. Somebody has spaghetti missiles. I love it. Commander Frakes is coming up here with the the best <laughs> backup you can ask for. Look at that. Oh my god, that's so cool. Okay. Beautiful. So this is, if anybody's wondering, can you use the new Scorpion to fight in a war? Not against one faction, but both factions. The answer is yes. A resounding yes, when you have also like seven friends um, doing the same thing as you are. So it's just that simple. Right, Sparks? Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, his he's got a really shiny one. Who's this? That's a really nice shiny one. I feel like I, I bought the wrong paint job now. Alright. Oh, that looks cool. All right, there's there's actual guys on the ground. <laughs> if you want to guys find some targets, I don't think we're gonna take out that um, vulture. Oh, guys, there's a vulture right on top of our heads. Looks like his shields are down. Oh, can we get him? Can we get him? I don't think so. I think it's just going to make it. Yep, he got away. Somebody says they're going to carpet bomb <laughs> the war zone. I hope that happens. Does that mean the war zone gets new carpet? Yeah. Dude, look, have you seen have you seen the carpet? I mean we've been running all over the place. Alright, how far are you, Sparks? I I may not make it, sir. <laughs> how far away are you? Uh far enough away I'm not gonna make it. Okay, that's fine. However, you know, you know Mars, you, you do have enough uh, patriots nearby. Somebody else could do the do the, the gun running. Oh my gosh! Everybody just got T posed away. Did you see that? I ran into that group of guys. I don't know if they're having a snack break or something. Enemy SRV in body. That was crazy. There was like a whole group over here. What are they doing? So I think it goes without saying, Sparks, that whenever you introduce a car and pedestrians in any video game, there's this some kind of prime prime evil urge. To just run into them, even if you have a yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of real life, where like when you get into a car, yeah, your primal urge is to not run over anybody, right? But in a video game, it's the exact opposite. Unless it's deer. Unless it's deer. Uh huh. 
now where I'm trying to find it. Oh, there's a lot of a lot of explosions happening. Whoa. Stuff is, is raining from the sky. Did we blow up a ship? <laughs> there's stuff raining from the sky. I think we have. No, there's an air war going on. Is that between commanders and NPCs? It looks like a commander ship getting shot at. I can't tell. Sparks is an air war now. Oh, look. Somebody's joining me. Okay, cool. Somebody's in my, uh, I think it's, I think it's Cryojoid. There we go. Okay, Cryojoid. Let's do this. All right, I'm going to go into sort of external mode here. So I can see better what I'm doing. All right, let's do this. Let's find them. Let's find them, Cryo. Oh my goodness, look at the spaghetti m missiles. Oh, there's, there's a guy here, in front of us, Cryo. Oh, there goes my camera. Okay, all right, so now this is the other feature of the uh, Scorpion, is that somebody else can be in your SRV. I'm gonna drive around. Here we go. There it goes. Fine, Crow. You got him. <laughs> I think you got him. Oh no, there's another one over here. All right, Crow, get get this one. I'm gonna run into this one. Go, no, no, no. Get the other guy. There we go. I got that guy. Oh, did I get two for one? I think I did. So it's not two for one because you forgot about the tax. Oh yeah, it's a uh, you get one and a half. Oh, I did it. Oh, this this feels really good. Okay. There's some dudes over here. Oh, these guys—they don't suspect. They don't suspect. Got him. Oh man. Okay, let's go find some more. I wonder how more pips to weapons. You got it. Sorry about that. Going to where those reinforcements are. There's some right here. Oh, nice. Oh, nice shot. <laughs> this is beautiful. Oh, watch out. We got a guy in the back. The guy's shooting us from behind. All right, he had a bad day. Oh my goodness. Oh, there's a whole new troop of them over there. Fire missiles. Okay, uh, person to our, our left. Okay, you got him. Purple's got him. There's a commander out there. Watch out. Never mind. I think he's a regular dude. Okay. Watch out, Commander. You might be mistaken for an NPC. Yeah, if, if, if you see somebody jumping in the air, you know they're, they're a real person.
Okay, to our, our right. There you go. Nice shot. This is a op this is an optimal spot to camp out in because apparently this is like a nice crossroads for a lot of NPCs coming down right in front of us. Perfect shot. We need another rocket in there. It it doesn't seem like a good strategy from the NPC side to just continually drop cannon fodder in front of it. Position where they cannot possibly override. Yeah, I know it's like a bunch of like World War One machine gunners shooting down French that are filled with Elan and the red pantaloons. Oh, this is great. We got nice um. Make sure you got that crossfire going, guys. We got a drop coming in right behind us. Guns behind us now. <laughs> or just back up. That's the, that's a good strategy too. Oh my god. Make sure to jump in the air to to identify yourself as a non-NPC. Okay, more more NPCs coming down. This is how it was supposed to be done. This is this is what they designed the game to be like. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, there are a bunch of them over here. Remember to, to identify yourself as a non-NPC by jumping into the air. Or you might be shot at. It's like the one strategic advantage you, you really have against yeah. NPCs is they haven't considered that they could jump. I know, right? We just barrel at them with our car. <laughs> this is bad. Okay, th they're coming back down. About five of them. Right onto the helipad. Sayonara. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That was amazing. You got you got an extra one too. Bonus points. The guy over there wearing bright yellow. Is another one coming down? I hear I hear a ship. Oh, it's over there. What what exactly is the, the the strategic idea behind dropping in people in the middle of this blender? I mean, think about it. Can you take a train here? Can is is there enough atmosphere to like parachute in? I mean, it's a, it's equivalent to parachuting in. Well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of like uh, you know dropping people off in a, in a Excuse helicopter. Excuse me. To a place, but normally you kind of want to drop people into a perimeter that you've secured. This particular contingent seems to be wanting to drop, um, drop four commanders at a time unsupported into the middle of the enemy turrets. Boy. You know, you know, I feel like this is—it's—it's it's huh. like it's like being on the on the plane, oh, of a bunch of paratroopers, and then them. Here you go. Your commander saying, "We're, we're going to parachute and secure that hot lava down there." Sorry, <laughs> we ran out of ammo. I need to uh, restock the ammo here. Okay, ammo is restocked. I apologize. All right, ammo restocked. I think. I was wondering why is Cryodroid jumping on top of my... Uh oh. Hold on. 
taking some damage here. I'm just gonna reorient orient myself. It's taking some shield damage. I think it was some friendly fire. Oh, watch out, watch out. We got people coming out on the right, right hand side. Now remember, you can re recharge your ammo. So if you run out of ammo, don't don't uh, worry. Okay, right in front of us, Cryojoid. One o'clock. Cryojoid, one o'clock. Twelve o'clock. <laughs> and there's a tourist ship landing. Can you, can you remind us of what is the strategic initiative you were trying to accomplish here? Well, the strategic initiative is number one, to test out the capabilities of the Scorpion. So far we've proven that it's a mighty fighting machine, especially when you have about seven other commanders with you. The, uh, the other, the other um, um, objective here is to secure the patent for the uh, hamburger f flavored broccoli that's being made here um, and in, to do so we need to end the war between these two factions who are fighting over said patent because um, they, they want this they want to charge you twenty dollars a patty and we say no the ghost draft tourist hub we're not about profits we're about I have no idea but we want to pay twenty bucks for hamburger five bucks is fine so we're here to make sure both sides lose so we're fighting against both sides of, th of this faction war and uh, and once we believe we've we've succeeded, um, I guess I guess we declare ourselves winners, right? Oh, okay. So is the is the whole idea here to declare yourselves winners? Is that the mm -hmm. the actual strategic uh -oh. outcome here? Uh oh. All right, guys, let's go win. Now this, okay, actually. Let's see here. I think we're at the point where we need to f find the um, a win objective, right? How do we declare ourselves winners? Because I feel like we're just making, <laughs> creating this to a forever war, since no side is winning. Uh oh. Oh boy, I shouldn't have tur turned that corner by myself. I say that, but look at this. Look at all these folks. What what happens if you join a faction and then shoot at your... Uh, the faction that you join? Well, interesting enough. So, once we started shooting at people, it made us uh, automatically join the other faction. So, every time we shoot the other faction, um, they don't know we're there. They just... Oh, it's just friendly fire. Who cares? Okay. Cryojoid. We're being shot at. Okay, I'm going to go on foot. I'm going to go into this building. And I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find um, the MacGuffin. Oh yeah, that's always good. You need so, to find the MacGuffin. So Sergeant MacGuffin's in here. We gotta go get him. All right, where is he? Sergeant MacGuffin's here, and we got. Oh boy! Oh no! The the fire fire extinguishers have been destroyed. Oh look at this! Look at this! Oh no! This is Sergeant McGuffin's car. This is bad news. Oh, his f oh, but his floating oh, no. his floating grenade case is still here with his favorite grenades. 
Okay, he's still alive. He's somewhere here. Oh, good. Thank you. There was an evil mimic. Enemy we got him. Alright, Cryo. Okay, Sergeant McGuffin. Oh! Another mimic. I got it. Whoa! Whoa! What was that? Okay, Cryo, we're going this way. You know I'm not an NPC because I look like this. Okay, if, if I look, if you see something looks like this, not an NPC. Okay. Uh, okay. Over here. Oh boy. Yeah. No. No. This is. No. This is his air purifier. Sparks. Having trouble finding Sergeant McGuffin. Request backup. Uh. Well, you should just start looking for him backwards. Nice. Oh, it's Scarjoid. Here we go. Here it goes. Right here. We capture this and we get it. Okay, almost doing this. Okay, yeah, everybody clap. Clap. Make this make this go by faster by clapping. It's it's fairy powered. If you clap, say I believe in fairies. I believe in fairies. And you clap, I do believe in fairies. I do believe in fairies. I do believe in fairies. I do believe. I do believe. In Nobody fairies. fire back. You just clap. I do believe in fairies. Just keep clapping. I don't think this is the group to convince to not fire back. Okay, I just gotta keep clapping. There's somebody here in a in a weird SRV. I've never seen that SRV before. Look at that. How strange. It has jump jets actually attached to it. It has six wheels instead of two. Almost. It's got to keep clapping. A lot of people don't know this, Sparks, but you can make this uh, thing go faster if you clap and say, I, I do believe in fairies. I saw it in a movie once. How many claps per second do you think you're going to oh, get? Oh, God. My APM is like so high right now. I think it's like 12. Did we do it? We did it. We did it, guys. All right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. APM, APM stands for applause per minute, right? Yeah, applause for a minute. Get this lady. She doesn't believe in fairies. They're not just butterflies. Okay. Where's our sh Where's our place? Oh, Richie, Acosta. Mm. Take that, Richie. Okay. Alright, guys. We did it. We sent the signal to Sergeant McGuffin. We told him that we won. This looks like bad news. Oh, no! Okay. Last I, last I checked, this was red. <laughs> okay. All right, um, let's go back inside. Sparks, I think, I think some, somebody took out my, my SRV. I have a sinking feeling it was cryojoid. Okay, my, I cannot recall ship. Okay, we need to run. Guys, we need to run. Uh, okay, he's friend, okay, dark. No, can I, can I join you? Can I join this about? I can't. Can I go in here? Board vehicle. Board. Wait. I can board. Oh, look at this! I'm in the passenger seat. How cool is this? Sparks, I'm in the passenger seat. Wait. How do I go into? The I don't. I haven't programmed my turret control yet. 
Disemboweled, take us... Take us to a secure location so we can uh, get the uh, orca to come back down so I can get in another SRV. Look at this! Oh, how cool! Oh, this is nice. I like this. I like this view. What do you like uh, about the aesthetics? The aesthetics, I really like it. It really, it really feels cool. Because with the other SRV, it, just, it feels like you're in this like this glass bubble. Well, this feels like a assault vehicle. You know, like an all-terrain, not all-terrain, but lightly armored assault vehicle. You know. And I like the way the the gun is and the the. The license plate camera is pretty cool. You don't have any qualms about it being piloted by a skeleton. Oh, a skeleton. I mean, that should come standard. Honestly. Okay, I think I should be able to call down my, my uh, ship from here. Let's see. Yeah, recall ship. I recall ship. Oh, yes, I remember ship. Sparks, I remember the ship now. I can recall it. Look at that. Uh, yes, it was it was several units of time ago. I, re I recall a ship as well. Ah uh, yes, it was it was silver, silver in na in nature. You now I realize this is a very rocky area. I have no idea where that thing that long tuba is gonna land. Disemboweled. How am I able to? Oh, we're in the same group. Why are you red though? Oh, is it because you're on the other team? Is that why? I think that's why. Oh, here's my ship. Ship! Oh, please land. Oh, there's another ship over there. He's moving around. Okay, oh, here comes my ship. Oh, look at that. So I suppose the scarab is kind of like the not the scarab, but the scorpion is is kind of like the dominate the dominator version of the SRV because it has like very little jump jets, you know. Well, so just going over uh, uh, for for chat and mm -hmm. people watching, um, what are some key differences between the scarab and the scorpion that you think are relevant to to know about? Well, number one, obviously the uh, the gun. I think I don't know, but it feels like it does a lot more damage than the regular SRV gun, and then also the, the missile launcher. But one thing I think needs to be said is uh, it's not as fast as the SRV, right? Now, there's one thing where the jump jets is definitely it's, it's like abysmal. It's like you can jump over maybe a small ledge with the jump jets of the scorpion um, but the uh, the scorpions um, speed the acceleration is so so little but it does eventually ramp up to like the top speed that an SR a regular SRV the, the scarab does but the scorpion takes a long time to get up to that to that uh, that top speed so if you're looking for this thing to be like a like a top speed racer, not so much. But if you're looking for it to be like a really cool um, race car to just like take uh, take ter uh, corners or stop on a dime, this is definitely your SRV. But I don't think that's why people ride these things. This thing's obviously built as a uh, as a combat vehicle, and it really does show. I mean, in we were why, why don't you drag race? Scorpion versus the Scarab. Oh, it'll be no contest. It'll, it'll be. Oh, we'll do that. We'll do that. Let's do it. Let's find. Hold on. There should be a place nearby that has one of those circle cities. It's not here. There's one nearby. Though. Let's see here. Or well, I guess what you could do, Mars, in order to make it really fair. You know, normally when you want to do something scientific, you want to make sure you really control your variables. You know what I mean? Uh huh. So, like, normally you'd want to, like, do a drag race of Scarab versus Scorpion to see who's the fastest. Uh -huh. And then you want to do, like, combat to see, like, who has the most firepower. But rather than being scientific, what you could do is you could just drag race and pull auto on in terms of guns and just see, like, which one survives. 
Mm -hmm. All right, let's do that. Let's go ahead and let's go to, I think it's here. I think there's a circle city here. Let's see. Is this one here? Yeah, it's here. It's kind of uh, funny because this is this is actually the place where I bought <laughs> the uh, the scorpion. Okay, we're going to Paliza Installation. It's in the same system, and I believe it's going to be on the dark side of the planet. And not that that matters. Like you're going to get there. Like where is it? I looked all over the day side, but it's a uh, Paliza Installation. Another reason why we're going there is because I, I, I think somebody blew up my scorpion. Now, what's interesting is that the scorpion exploded, but I didn't die. Usually, if your if your SRV blows up, then for some reason you as a person dies. I don't I don't get why, but um, it didn't do that this time. I don't know if that's a new thing. Does it? Can anyone confirm if uh, did they get rid of the thing if? Your score, if your SRV blows up, then you don't also blow up for no reason. Also, I don't see, uh, I'm not sure if my chat's not working, but I don't see anybody typing in chat. I haven't been seeing anybody type in chat either. I feel like, I don't know if it's the game sounds, but I hear like yelling and screaming. Maybe it's real life. I don't know. You know, if that's real life, you might you might want to tend to that, sir. Mm. Is it possible that you're 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 gaming from an actual war zone? It could be. No, there's a parking lot outside my balcony here. Sometimes it's yelling out there, but not usually. No, I don't hear anything. What will we do with a drunken sailor? Asks Battledroid B1 Commander Frakes. What will we do with a drunken sailor, Sparks? Jeez, that's a question for the ages, I believe. I think you give him milk. Right? That's what, that's what you give. And you, you tell him to look at the horizon. Look at the horizon, drink some milk... Sit down for a little bit. Oh, someone's being interdicted. Crowdroid's being interdicted. Watch out. I mean, I'm not. I'm not sure that's that's what you're supposed to do with the drunken sailor. I'm just saying that's what I would do with the drunken sailor. Yeah, but I think I think tra I think traditionally, if it's early in the morning, you're supposed to shave their belly with a rusty razor. That's probably the best time to do it. Um, I've I've had my share of um drunken sailors in the morning and I gotta tell you every time I come at them with a rusty razor they're like stay away from the belly please and you just gotta do it you just can't you can't do it but you know co common sense would uh, or sorry sorry not common sense but like tra traditionally the recommendation has always been to put them in the hold with the captain's daughter and I just don't yeah. think that's a good idea no. I actually would not recommend doing that she is she is very feisty I would, yeah, I would not go in there myself. No way, Jose. Uh, I mean, I, th I mean, the captain already had, you know, couldn't find daycare. Uh, you know, on Earth, and now has to take the daughter with him. On the ship. You know, it's it's take your, it's not even take your daughter to work day. I mean, can you imagine that if the captain's like, hey, so uh. That drunken sailor that we had, uh, what'd you do with him? Oh, we put him in the hold with your daughter. Like, you'd be fired. <laughs> Would you, though? I mean, what captain puts their, their their child in the hold? Not like, you know, in a cabin, right? Not like in the galley, but in the hold with, like, the the rum and, and, and other things. 
Well, but, but maybe maybe that's not where she was. Maybe you also had to like you know escort her to the hold. But like either way, like I I if I were, if I were captain uh-huh. and you reported to me that those were your decisions, uh-huh. uh, you would you'd be walking the plank pretty quick. Oh no, not the plank. I'm really bad at balance. That's what I, I don't like the the plank for that reason. I'm not very good at balancing. I tell you right right now, I'd fall off if I get to the end. Okay, we're here. Oh, this is the racetrack. Is this is this what Top Gear does? They find the race track. They d- they definitely race things. Yeah, sure. All right, here we go. This is the place. Wonder Platypus has said has asked, "What have I missed?" Oh my gosh, I don't know. Well, tons, um, so much. You've missed the the stream. The entire <laughs> stream. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be up in like 45 minutes if you want to rewatch it. But right yeah. now, oh, the best part is that we're not wanted here. Okay, I'm going to get into my scorpion. And then, and it's I'm I'm going to the street sparks. I'm taking taking this show on the road. All right. So case in point, like what I was saying, be- like I was saying before, look at this acceleration. Now, granted, it sounds very loud and powerful. But look at that. 15, 17, 19, 20, 20. And, th- and this is no rocks in front of me, right? This is just a flat terrain. 25, 26, slowly ramping up. Its acceleration is abysmal. This is ridiculous. Now, I say that, but if you're going to take this SRV anywhere, you shouldn't be in the business of running away, right? <laughs> you want to stick around. So, if you're in a regular SRV and you move around, especially like where we were before with lots of obstacles around us, and you're just like sitting like this uh, full speed into a wall, right? And you try to back up and you full speed back into the other wall. That's not that's not optimal. That's not uh, SRVs we can believe in. But if you make the acceleration not so much, you know, kind of ramp it up, eh? And then you're fine. Does that make sense? Well, actually, I I, I got distracted. I want to know more about this uh, running away as a business. You said there's a business of running away. How how do you make money that way? Oh oh yes, the running away business. Well, um, you know, I, I, I'll tell you, but I got to tell you, I have a seminar about it and it's, you're going to have to recruit five of your friends to come to the seminar. It's about $15 each, but you only have to pay 10. Now you can choose one of your friends to also pay 10, but he also has to bring in five of his friends, f- um, ten do- $15 each. Does that make sense? I mean, that sounds like a pyramid scheme. It's It sounds like a pyramid scheme, but wait until you hear more. Anyways, so as you okay, can see, I'll wait. I'll wait I'm going to go ahead and go to the main. This is the outer track of this area. We're going to go through the inner track where there's a little bit more things. I'm going to go here. Whoa. I'm impressed that the uh, that the courier can fit in between those signs. Oh, here we go. Here's a ramp. Oh, look at that! Look at that! Look at that turning here. Here we go. The turning is great. The ha- now I can't tell if it, the handling is great because it, uh, the wheels really grip the ground or if it's because we're going so slow. Now we need another SRV. We need a regular SRV. So if anybody has one, let me know. Who's this? Okay, that's, uh, that's not the SRV we're looking for. Who's this? No. 
We need a regular you SRV. Regular. You mean Scarab. Yeah, yeah. SRV classic. Uh oh, the arrows indicate we're going the wrong way. This is a one-way street, Sparks. Yeah, it feels like. Oh, why did we take this turn? Whoa! Look at that. I overcompassed. I overturned, but then I pulled out of it, and I didn't spin around. I'm oscillating here to show that I'm not spinning out as much as I would in like a regular SRV. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this is like. But yeah, that's actually pretty good. Look at that. Man, that's pretty okay. Here's here's the T junction. Nice. Uh oh, another one. No, no. <laughs> that one's more user error than anything. Oh boy, now I'm dizzy. But the handling's great. All right, I do want to do the thing Sparks was saying, where we have one in a regular. Uh, what's it called? Okay, Cryjoid. Cryjoid, can you go back and get into a regular SRV? I want to try out the guns. I want to do the thing that Sparks was saying, where we shoot at each other. And see who lasts. Oh, but you also have to race. That way, it's completely unscientific. Okay, okay, we'll do the race first. No, no, no. That would be scientific. You could race and shoot guns random. It's like that way, we can't really tell anything. Okay, here we go. Disemboweled ego. Okay, hold on. Okay, time out, everybody. Okay, disemboweled. We're gonna start. Okay, let's go back. See, the, 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 Mark, Mark, yeah. the whole point of this is that you have scarabs uh -huh. who might be faster, might be slower. Uh -huh. You have scorpions who might be faster, might be slower. You have scorpions who might have better firepower and may, may not. I mean, I'm pretty sure they do. You might have scarabs where it's like, well, maybe, maybe they actually are better. And so by combining all of this, everyone can just have a complete, like, you know, crap show of whatever happens. And everyone can then later argue. That it was like, oh well, this one's faster, but I got shot. <laughs> oh, well, I was better shooting, but uh -huh. I was, you know, like now, yeah. now everyone can just argue about it uh, up half the stream. Okay, all right, well, we can do that here. Okay, everybody, line up behind me, and they're going to race. We're going to take this road until it ends. I don't know where it's going to end, but it's going to end at some point. All right, cool. We have another. Well, it's going to end when there's only one left. <laughs> <laughs> there's another SRV here. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me line up here okay all right you guys ready for some racing ready for some racing actually everybody go up in, in front of me go in front of me actually that way I can see where I'm going <laughs> nice nice uh, Tokyo drift there Okay, I don't know who's in this SRV, but if you're in this SRV, go in front of me. There you go. In front. Avant. Pas derrière. I hear somebody else coming in SRV. <laughs> golden Golden Asp is nodding in approval. That's all we that's all I ever wanted. Okay. All right, once everybody's in front of me, the red SRV, and pointed the right direction, we can go. All right, okay, guys. Mars, you have, yeah. you have one more responsibility what? After, you, after you take off. What? You, in order to, like, to end the stream, uh -huh. once, once this starts, Yeah. You have to pick the most appropriate time to say, now this is pod racing. Okay, okay, okay. All right, ready, guys? And go, 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 go. All right, so the SRVs have decided to try flying their whole way over there. Now, as you can see, their acceleration is, is crazy. Like, they're way ahead of us. We're trying to catch up. Ah, look at this. It's the rabbit versus the hare. This guy's flying around and he's crashing. Crashing like a big dork. Look at this. The hare is now pulled ahead while the rabbits are behind. Oh boy, my, that makes no sense. my, hare and rabbits are my camera 
is moving, which means there's somebody right behind me. Okay, the other SRV is way up there. I can barely see him. He's like a, just a pixel. But I, the nimble, what well, you were saying, rabbit, right? The nimble rabbit will come and avenge. All right, here we go. Well, so far, Sparks, I gotta say, the uh, the SRV is a lot faster. I mean, the um, Scarab is a lot faster. Uh oh, why is this? Why has this happened? What's going on? Now, now's the time to shut your face, sir. Hold on. Why I I ran? I think somebody bumped me, but I don't know. Uh oh, I'm taking fires. Okay, we got now. We got to Okay, we can't beat him. We blow him up. Got him. Oh, there's the other one. Get his friend too. He's different than us. All right, Sparks. Now this is pod racing. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I did it. I pod raced. So, um, after conclusive evidence, it goes without saying that, um, what ship I am in? I am in the, uh, the, the Scorpion. The Scorpion is the better racer because it does not blow up on contact with missiles. And that turns out that's all that ever mattered. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was two hours to find out that fact. I wonder if I can just punch this. Ow! Okay. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could punch his SRV to death. Oh. Apparently being on foot makes even worse SRV. Alright guys, that was lots of fun. Thanks for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Um, Thanks everybody. Uh, and as always, uh, I'm Sparks. And I'm Mars Europe. This has been Ghost Giraffe, I think. Right? That's who we are. That's yeah. who we are. Yes, we'll Thanks say.